So Neil, here we are. Um, when you first joined Saracens, did you expect to be here 200 games later? No, definitely not. Um, you know, I think I'm very fortunate you know, to have played that many games for, for such a great club. You know, when I first came over, I came over on a two-year contract and you know, being the young, um, sort of naive guy then, I thought I'd play here for two years and then head back to South Africa and finish my career there. But you know, I'm still thoroughly enjoying my rugby and, and love this club and, and that's why I'm still here. You had 10 caps for South Africa under your belt when, when you first joined Saracens. Mm. Was it a difficult decision leaving South Africa? Um, yes and no. I think, you know, when you when you start off your, your rugby, I was always one that wanted to start at one place and finish at one place. I had this desire to do that for whatever reason. And um, <clears throat> the way things went and transpired, um, the decision became a lot easier uh, the longer I played in South Africa. And, and it was just at a time where I thoroughly enjoyed my rugby in, in Cape Town and, you know, very fond. I only have fond memories of Cape Town, but there was a time that, that came and I just decided I needed a change. And you know, Saracens offered me that opportunity and, and you know, I haven't looked back and, I, and I'm so glad I, I made the right decision when I did. So Alan Gaffney signed you um, while Kieran Bracken was at the end of his career. Mm. What were your first impressions of the club when you came here? It was great, I, you know, I think it was a club that um, when I first arrived, you know, not knowing much about the club and, and about the English Premiership then, um, I thought it was a club with massive potential, um, just in terms of the the calibre of players that, you know, that were part of the squad and, you know, I thought that you know, had, we, had we harnessed that, that potential and, and it brought together all those skills and expertise that the club had, that, that we had the potential to win things, you know, and, we did pretty well, but unfortunately we didn't win anything you know, back when I first started. But um, yeah, that was my first impression. That was a, a club of, of great calibre. So you mentioned players um, that, that were there. Obviously, was, uh, the squad is incredibly different. Different now. You played alongside the likes of um, Kevin Sorrell, Andy Farrell, um, Paul Gustard, who then became your coaches. What was that like for you? Yeah, it's a bit strange. You're giving my age away here, but it's you know, obviously a bit strange with these guys. You know, obviously having played alongside them and you know all great players in their own right. And I, I think the transition, you know, over from from playing to coaching for them has been so easy. You know, and um, I think the important thing is that the, the, the ethos and the culture that we have in this club is not one of of teacher sort of pupil relationship, and rather that we we're all on the same level and, and we all have an input. I think these guys, you know, owing to their age and, and their enthusiasm, I think they, you know, they, they push those 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 boundaries in, in that regard. And you know, they're learning, and I mean, they're, they're outstanding coaches as well as as, as they were players. So I, I thoroughly enjoy playing underneath them. Um, you know, obviously they they end up starting out their coaching careers, and I'm sure they're going to go on and, and have very very good ones. So when Brendan came to the club in 2009, there was a, a kind of mass exodus of players. A lot of players left. But you, you, you survived the cut and um, clearly were, 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 were highly regard, regarded. How did you feel and how, how was the club when that change happened? Yeah, I always tell the story, you know, in terms of when, when that first happened. It was bittersweet, really, because, you know, obviously I was delighted to, to be kept on. You know, obviously when 12 or 14 guys were told they were no longer needed. And it was obviously guys that you were close with, guys you played with for, for a good couple of years, two, three years, who, who are now going to move clubs and, you know, an influx of new players. So, you know, it was difficult in that regard, saying goodbye to, you know, to all your teammates, friends who you've battled with over the last couple of years. And, and obviously, but at the same time, it was something new, something exciting, a new venture, and, <coughs> you know, to, to move forward with the club. And, you know, obviously you have to make the decision. And, um, you know, obviously, I'm totally happy with the way things turned out. It it really revolutionised this club and and the way we we sort of approach things. And I, and I think the results you know speak for themselves in that regard. So we, we talk about change. Um, you've you've been through a lot of change on and off the uh, off the field. Yeah. What what do you think has changed the most from the time you started from that first game against London Irish and then yeah, to now? you know I think I think we have a clear identity. You know, these last four or five years. Um, and I think everyone buys into it. You know, we always talk about our values at the club um, that, that we live by both on and off the pitch. And the biggest thing for me is, you know, from from when I first started, is is the belief within the squad, and the belief that we've that we've created within the squad that we can go out against anybody and perform. And it's it's not a case of blowing hot and cold as such. You know, perhaps we were a little bit inconsistent back in those days. Um, you know, before before the takeover so to speak um, 
and through no fault of our own, I suppose. But I think once we've created that identity and, and we have that belief that we can go out week in and week out to perform, um, you know, we don't pick and choose games, and, and we have that mentality and that culture. I think that's probably the uh, the biggest change for me. And you know, obviously, on the back of a good couple of seasons, you know, it, it's a draw card for for wonderful players to join the club. And we've got guys like Billy and who have joined, and you know, another host of great players, Chris Ashton, to name a couple. But yeah, you know, hopefully, this the club will keep going from strength to strength, and then and then win that silver win, and attract more great players who want to be part of it. And, and you've seen players um, come through the ranks. I mean, when he first joined, obviously Alex Good, mm. uh, and and obviously later on Owen Farrell have come through the ranks yeah. and played international. How how pleasing is that for you to see? Oh, it's fantastic, you know. To you know, Alex Good when I first arrived, I mean, he was a child, and, and Owen Farrell was even younger. So, you know, to see these guys put on an English jersey. I mean, I played with Owen's dad, so you know, it gives you an indication how much older I am than him. But you know, these guys are at the forefront of of English rugby at the moment, and. You know, watching them come through the academy system and you know and, and play in the junior levels and then make their debuts you know when when I was uh, you know just at the club for a couple of years and to go on and I'll be front runners for England I think it's just fantastic and and there'll be more names coming out of this club you know there won't just be the Farrells and goods there's gonna be a lot more names from the junior ranks and um, I have no doubt in the next couple of years we're gonna see those names come to the fore in, in recent times um you and Richard Wigglesworth seem to obviously share share the role and and alternate. Is it true that you did you flip a coin for the um, the Premiership final? Yeah, it is true. Um, we did do that. It was um, yeah, it was a bit of a strange one. I can't say that I expected that to ever happen in my career. But yeah, I mean, obviously the the flip of the coin worked out in the end. We managed to win that final. So you know, it was a it was a good decision. But yeah, it's you know, obviously to to have Wiggy and obviously Ben Spence and on. Um, you know, as competition, it's it's always great, and I'm enjoying my rugby as much as I did, you know, ten years ago, and um, you know, the competition is obviously, you know, very stiff, and and it's hard to to obviously, you know, you want to play every game as we all do, and we have this policy in the team that we do rotate, you know, and, and we keep guys fresh, and and we trust the second guy or third guy as much as we do the first guy who plays. So, and as long as we buy into that, you know, as long as we put the team first, you know, that's that's part of our belief system and, and part of our ethos that, you know, the group comes before the individual, and um, we've got a fantastic group of individuals here, yeah, and, and it's going to stand the club in very good stead in the future. Kevin Sorrell says you're the most consistent player he's ever worked with. And you're regarded as one of the fittest players in the club. Is there more rugby to come from you? I mean, is there another season in you? Yeah, I certainly hope so. You know, I've, I've, I plan to play another season. Um, you know, like I said, I've, I've been very blessed. I've been very fortunate in that my my body is still going and, and, and I feel good. And I think that's partly due to, to the way we've been managed. You know, we manage very well at the club which is, I think, a standout of, of this club as opposed to many other places in that it's very individualised. You know, no one guy has to do what the group does. I think it's, you know, no matter how old you are, you know, even if you're 22 year old, your, your programme can be adjusted to, to fit your needs. And I think the way I've been handled over the last four or five seasons, you know, obviously sharing the workload with, with the other halfbacks has, has helped tremendously. And I think the biggest thing for me is I still have a burning desire to play. And, you know, it, I, I still want to contribute to the club and to Saracens, you know, they've been fantastic to me and, and I want to, you know, give back as much as I can, both on and off the field if I can. Um, I do have some more rugby in me, obviously it might be out of my hands at some stage, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping fit and hopefully keeping as consistent as, as, as I need to and, um, yeah, hopefully there'll be a couple more games left in me yet.